Hey, welcome to the Danger Zone. It's Ashley. I urge everybody to do their own research. I'm just trying to bring a little entertainment our way. The full disclaimer is down below. And I always wish you lots of love and many blessings. A huge thank you to E. Peterson. I love this thing. When I got to the post office yesterday and opened the bag, my heart skipped a complete beat. Listen, this is, the, I squealed so loud. I'm not kidding. I probably embarrassed my youngest son. He was with me. But he, he was so elated. We both were to see this. And he's a big old young man, you know, and he just loved it as much as I did. You guys have been such a blessing to me in my life and really have helped me heal my broken heart. And this right here is just a complete blessing. So, Peterson, E. Peterson, thank you. And be looking in your mailbox because according to Amazon, it should be there before the week's over. Speaking Archie's at the phone. Hi. Fun. <laughs> Off to me. Ready? Happy? What? Happy. New? New? New. New. Not bad for a 19-month-old child. What do you think? And according to the media outlets, they say he sounds American. In my opinion, as an American, he sounds British. I'd really love to know your thoughts and opinions on it. Leave it down below. Finally, you guys, people are starting to question the royal family. They want to know how much is coming out of Charles's pocket. How much money is he contributing to their livelihood while they've escaped to their freedom? Now, the entire point of Mexit was for them to hop out as they did abruptly, short notice to everybody except them. They knew going into the marriage, they were not going to stay senior royal members. They planned all of this. Either way, people are starting to wonder, how much money is Charles flipping in their direction? What's the purpose of Mexit for another year? Their entire point was to stand on their own two feet. $150 million so far with two of the major contracts. And y'all, that doesn't even include what Oprah and Kim Kardashian have been peddling for her. That investment into the latte. Now, in January, Harry's due to have a Zoom call with the family to go ahead and start the Mexit extension process. He has a few requests. He's asking that they continue to be over every patronage. I have a hard time with that word, y'all. So if I'm not saying it right, just correct me. But he wants them to be over every patronage that they were assigned at marriage. And they say he's going in full force demanding his military stuff back. My experience in the military made me who I am today. And it's also connected me with some of the strongest, funniest, and most memorable people that I've ever met. Once we join this team, we're always a part of this team. Once we've served, we're always serving. And proudly so. Hey, y'all, those words came out of Harry's breath. I'm not too sure his military roles are all that important, especially if he wants to watch a good movie. He's seen enough times to know by heart every single word. Do you guys remember the Royal Marines had asked him to the memorial service 11 months prior to the Lion King event? He's only the Captain General of the Royal Marines. So instead of showing up and paying tribute to these 11 people that were killed, he decided to go with Megan to the Lion King event, where he, of course, had that deal with his good buddy, Iger. Yet once serving, we're always serving. Ain't that right, Harry? Unless, of course, it comes down to a dollar bill. Now, that's a whole different story. I'm not quite for sure how he's going to keep all his patronages or his military titles, especially since they're saying if he wants to stay in the States long term, which it seems like he does, he's going to have to renounce his UK citizenship. Hmm, possibly, more likely than not. Now, I did sit through 34 minutes of that podcast. I want to talk to you about it really, really fast. It's all political. It's everything they were asked not to do. They want to bring hope to a hopeless world, trying to wake everybody up regarding feminism and racial injustice. 
more hypocrisy and word salads. That's what we have to look forward to. Who did Harry used to be but a racist pig? And she, just like Oprah, has really never hobnobbed with anyone non-white. Hopefully those two can learn something from their own podcast. Today's podcast turned my stomach. It's a good thing I didn't eat prior. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't eat a puke pail. Loaded to the gills, Deepak Chopra got on there with his insightful words, reflecting back on what 2020 did for him. Of course, he had some words of wisdom. He always does, doesn't he? And then there's Elton John, who said he was in the middle of a tour and it had to come to a complete stop. It was devastating. He had to actually stay at home and do all his AA meetings via Zoom. And thank goodness for Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. How much are they getting from Zoom for plugging the heck out of it? That's my question. These people in their mansions, that would totally feel like a punishment to be on lockdown in his home. And of course they have to invite in their Jose Andres friend. You know the World Central Kitchen guy? He provides all that leftover food from restaurants at the end of the night, the very next day to those affected by natural disasters. But his foundation is booming. And they all seem to be running in the same circle. You know what I'm saying? And, of course, James Corbin came on and he said, Hey, I can watch the corner of a rug all day. I got to spend a lot of time with my kids for once. It's almost as if he had a light bulb moment that his family meant something to him. George the Poet gave a little poetry talking about what 2020 meant for him. And the tennis player Naomi Osaka said that she enjoyed her days in 2020 playing video games with her sister. The author, Rachel Cargill, also an activist when it comes to racial injustice and feminism, got on there talking about she read books every day at the same time on Twitter to children just to keep everybody connected. Good for her. These people that were on that podcast today for 34 minutes of awfulness, Tyler Perry is the only one that stepped up to the plate when it comes to humanitarianism. He actually fed 5,000 plus people for Thanksgiving. So after I sat through listening to these people's hardships of 2020, of them laid up in their mansions with their money still flowing, their food still in the fridge, life is really no different, minus the fact that they're not shopping on Rodeo as often. Harry and Meghan decided they would lead us out with a toast. And they said, love always wins. Trust us, love wins. Meanwhile, 2020 for the rest of us looks a little different. They all toasted to hoping that 2021 will be the best year yet. But for who are they speaking? Their Montecito bubble. That's who they're talking to. 2020 looks a lot different for the rest of us. I can guarantee you this. People have lost their jobs, their medical, their cars, their homes. They're homeless. I live right down the road from a push shelter, as they call it. Every morning it's seven sharp. It's like they open the floodgates and out comes families with children and they walk to the gas station and they sit there and panhandle all day. These aren't addicts. These aren't users for the most part. These are people that lost everything thanks to the big man's plan. And what really, really irked me, you guys, at the end of their podcast, everybody was toasting to a better 2021. It's going to be the best year yet. That's so easy to say once you're a millionaire. You can afford to take years off and not miss a beat, financially speaking. They collect royalties. They always collect revenue. They don't have a problem. 2021 is going to be fine for them. Have you ever lost everything with not a dollar to your name with children in tow? How do you recover? I've been in that situation. Had it not been for God opening the right doors for me at the right time, I don't, I, I promise you, I don't know how I would have ever gotten out of that horrible hole that me and my children were in. It's hard. So for 2021 being the best year yet, they're speaking only in their bubble, their Montecito bubble, their millionaire's bubble. The rest of the world's going to have a hell of a time trying to claw their way out of this. 
2020 has opened my eyes for sure of how ass backwards this entire country is. And I can't speak for the rest of the world. I just know in the United States, when somebody's picking you up from wherever you've fallen out at, they're working on you, saving your life, getting you to the hospital in a safe, timely fashion. They're making ten fifty an hour. In the county I currently live in, fourteen seventy five is what a firefighter tops out at before he gets on salary. And the only way he's on salary is he has to put a lot of years in. And even then, you're not really paid that well on salary. It's just so gross to me that the folks that are fighting our crime and saving our lives and teaching our children and putting out our fires are getting paid peanuts next to these people. Something needs to change really fast in a big way. I'm going to keep these families and these workers in my prayers. And if you pray, I hope you do too. You guys, I thank you for being here with me and listening. If you've made it this far, God bless. I hope you're having a really good day today. I'll see you soon. We'll talk fast. Please stay safe and be blessed.